Hi everyone, today we're making the Trinette knicker. It's a little French knicker style short, super cute to wear, it's really fast to make um, and I'm making the knit version today. Here we have the pieces for the Trinette knicker. So these are the fronts and these are the backs. It looks remarkably similar so I'm going to take one pin, put it through the front in the middle of the panel, same thing, and for the backs I'm going to take two pins and do the same thing. Just save some time means you don't have to go back and forth to your pattern so much because you can automatically see what is the front and what is the back really easily. I always try and use pins which have heads to make it look nice and easy. So once we've got our fronts and backs matched and marked I'm going to take one back panel one front panel match them at the inside leg right sides together I'm going to pin them together for this I'm using ballpoint pins because I'm using a knit fabric And I'm going to be sewing on the overlocker today, so I'm going to be pinning outwards. You can also sew on your regular machine using a stretch or a, a jersey or a ballpoint needle and a stretch stitch. So I'm going to sew down here. Um, I'm also going to do the other side at the same time. Here we are at the overlocker, ready to sew our inside leg seam. I have the overlocker set up as a four thread. If you're going to be using it to stitch actual seams, a four thread is recommended. The seam allowance is one centimeter, so I am only cutting off a little bit as my seam al uh, allowance of the stitching of my overlocker is six mil. the side. Leave a nice long tail and clip, clip closer, pull and it will automatically lock off. So we're just going to trim up and then we're going back to pin the crotch seam. So next we're going to sew the crotch seam. We've got the front here marked by its one pin and the two pins for the back here. I'm going to take the other side. Wrong way up. <laughs> and the reason I knew it was the wrong, wrong way up because front must go on front this time round. So as soon as I saw the two pins, I knew it was the wrong way round. I'm gonna start with the crotch the actual uh, join. So push your seam allowance towards the back for both pieces and pop a pin straight through there holding those two together. Then we're going to pin around and around. If you always start from your center of your crotch you'll always make sure that they're even on each way so I'm going to pin and then we're going to head straight to the overlocker to sew the seam. So we're just sewing the crotch seam again it's a one centimeter seam allowance sorry for that noise I've just closed my window and that was just uh, one of the uh, closures just dropping down behind my machine. So as you get to the junction point, make sure that you keep your seams pointing towards the back. If you're not sure which is the back, remember, look for your double pins. Just go a little slower through that section so it feeds on through. I'm going to finish up here and then we're going to move to the next step. 
So here's the seam we've just sewn on the overlooker and now we're going to flip our garment about so that we can get ready to do our side seams. The easiest way is to take the seam you've just sewn, turn it so that it is now right sides together instead of lengthwise, and you'll start to see the shape of the shorts coming together. So now you should have one front indicated by one pin and one back indicated by two pins on top of each other. This time we're going to pin along our side seam and sew our side seam and then do the same on the other side. Just about to do the side seam. The edges are getting a little curly because it's a little hot today which I always find makes the jersey fabric a bit uh, more wriggly. just pause then because I was moving the microphone away from the noise of the overlock because it was uh, starting to show up as being very noisy. Leave a nice long tail. So there's one side seam. Now we're going to do the other side. So that's the main part of the sewing of the shorts done. We're going to, uh, next we all have to do is do our elastic around the top and our hems and we're done. It's time to turn the shorts the right way around. And you can automatically see this is the back because we've got our double pins and then the front. So for reference, I've actually cut these as a size 18 because I'd like to have really comfy sleep shorts for the summertime, uh, which is what I'm intending for these ones to do. So once we've got them to this point, we're ready to add our elastic. And I'll stop here and I'll explain how to quarter up the elastic so that we can get the correct tension around the actual body of the garment. Here's our Pico elastic we're going to use for the waist. I've already marked in a little bit from the edge because I want it to um, overlap a little bit. So what I'm going to do is match those two sections, fold it in half, get all the twizzles out. Mark the center. Now that I've got a center, I'm going to take one of the end pins to the center pin. Mark the halfway point. And the same on the other side. So this is when we sew in, we'll have a little bit to lap over. First side seam, center front, second side seam, center back. So we're actually we've marked all of the quarters of our elastic to help us get our tension correct. To get the length of the elastic, I put the elastic around my waist, um, a little bit underneath my belly button kind of what, um, height, because that's where these shorts sit. So because this elastic is quite stretchy, I found, find that that is the easiest and most accurate way to ensure that the elastic is going to fit you.
Now that you have your elastic all quartered, we're going to have the plush side of the elastic facing upwards with the decorative edge pointing down towards the short. I'm going to leave a little tail so that I can have a nice overlap later. I'm going to pin it in place at the centre back. And then my next pin is going to be at the side seam. The side seam I'm going to push backwards towards the centre back and pin again. The next pin is the centre front, the next one again is the next side seam and then we come back to the centre back. So I actually uh, will only pin the quarters and then that way you'll find that when you're sewing the elastic on you just stretch the elastic, not the fabric, to get the tension correct. So this makes more sense once we're actually at the sewing machine, I can show you which it is. So we're going to just pin the quarters first and then we're going to head straight to the regular sewing machine. Make sure you've got in a needle that's correct for sewing a stretch fabric and then we're going to attach the elastic. Make sure the needle in my machine is suitable for stretch knit fabrics and I have changed my stitching to be a straight stitch that's very long. So look at a 4.5 or a 5mm length stitch. It's like a basting stitch or a gathering stitch, but we will, we'll be using it for basting, not for gathering. This is my centre back. Obviously this elastic is going to come around and cross over. Don't worry about that now. Take out this pin and let it go. It makes it a lot easier to deal with it at the end. So we're going to line up. What I'm aiming to do here is I want my stitch line to be along as close to the edge of the decorative edge as possible. We're just going to do a long straight stitch to hold everything in place. To, get, to begin with, just get your machine stitching. You don't even need to do any back tack. Alright, so we've got it started to stitch. Now we need to start putting tension into our elastic to make it fit to the next segment, so the next quarter. So pull out your elastic until your elastic length is the same length as your fabric without stretching your fabric. So your fabric must stay soft without any stretch to it, only your elastic becomes taut. If it's too difficult to hold it and my hand is like way back here past where the camera can actually see, once you know how much tension there is, hold it in earlier. Hold the edge of the elastic to the edge of the fabric. Keep feeding it through the machine. Once you get to the point close to where you are holding, make sure your needle is down in the down position. Go back to your pin on your uh, next segment, on your next quarter. Re-pull the tension correctly being sure not to stretch the fabric. Line up the edges, hold the tension, stitch again. One of the reasons we do this is it's a lot easier on your hands to go uh, segment by segment, means you don't have to hold all of the tension in your hands. It also means that by doing the straight stitch along the edge, when we flip it for the next step, you end up with a lovely decorative edge of your elastic just poking above your stitch, uh, the edge of your knickers, which just looks really cute. So, um, just makes it. So, I've just come to the seam. I'm making sure I can feel that my seam allowance is pushing towards the back. Again, if you're not sure what's your back, look for your pins. I'm just going to go slow until I get over that seam allowance. Then I'm going to repeat that for the next segment, making sure that the elastic has the tension, the fabric is not under any tension, and that the edges match up, and I keep stitching my straight line. So I'm going to keep doing that the whole way around, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you just the end bit to show you how to do that nice lapping over at the end. We've been attaching the elastic and we're coming back around to the centre back. So I'm just going to stitch a little bit more. Right. Now as I'm getting to this edge here, I'm just going to double check, just need to cut a little bit of my elastic because I'm a little bit too long.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this one in half a little bit and this one the other way so it kind of makes two like little U type shapes if you can see that I'm going to put the edge of one in fold over and fold it back on itself so fold fold and back and what I'm aiming for is that I cannot see any raw edges so that it's all nice and neat in the edge there and then I'm going to keep stitching and if you can't hold this with your hand as you saw just pop a pin in it until you get nice and close and just go nice and slowly because you've now got quite a few layers of elastic once you're over the all the joints you can cut off take it away now you've got a nice join our next step is we're going to flip the elastic and you can see now that you've got that nice decorative edge from here we're going to swap the stitch type to a stretch stitch I like to use my triple stitch zigzag or my regular step zigzag so we're going to do that so I'm going to change my machine over and then we'll do the next step the elastic is now uh, push towards downwards towards the back so we can just see the little decorative edge and we're going to top stitch from the top so I'm going to line up underneath the machine what I'm aiming for is that the top line of my fabric actually lines up with this upper edge of my machine foot where the clear plastic section meets the metal section on my machine I happen to know that's sort of the top of the zigzag and it will mean that it has a nice look to it. Now here I'm just flattening it out by making sure it all rolls but I'm not re-stretching the elastic or the fabric. Right. Get it started. gliding over the seams sometimes when you're doing a zigzag um, your seams it might want to get stuck or it gets a little bit of a bump if that happens just put a little bit of tension into your back hand and pull it through it's the only time kind of we do that but it's just you now we're just keeping this section flat not adding any extra tension stitching it through. so this is going to take a while I'm going to stitch the whole thing around and then show you the finished edge so elastic is now attached and top stitched down with a zigzag stitch um, and you have this nice little decorative edge coming along the top if you don't have any pico you can just use regular elastic and sew it in a similar way but you could bump it down so that you don't actually see the edge popping up but some nice plush underwear elastic does make it a lot more comfortable to wear so our shorts are almost finished the next thing we actually have to do is just the hems and all I'm going to do with the hem is turn it up pin it in place and then top stitch it down because the legs are very generous here it is even though it's a knit fabric we don't need to finish them with a zigzag we can just use a regular straight stitch so a lot of people say you can't use a straight stitch on a knit fabric the trick is you can't use a straight stitch on a knit fabric if it still needs to stretch the legs here don't need to stretch they're not under any tension so I'm going to pin these up then I'm going to top stitch them in place with a um, straight stitch so I'll be back to show you the finished product in just a bit so we've just done our hems which means we're all finished on our trinette knickers they look super cute they took no time at all to make um, i hope you make plenty don't forget to share them with me on instagram hit subscribe so you can see more of the content coming up on youtube and get all of your patterns from measuretwice.cutonce.com.au